And may the God who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. Good morning. We are betwixt and between, are we not? In that middle time, the liminal time, the time between time, anxious for this all to be over and not sure when it will end. And unclear as to exactly what we'll even be doing then. We are in the mean time. And so, too, are the apostles. Jesus has been with them now for 40 days. 40 days after his resurrection, a month and then some, when I can only imagine it feeling for them as if the world has stopped. All small things cease to matter. Their friend, their hope, Their one who embodies all their longings is with them in the flesh. No longer dead. What could matter at all when you have visceral, tangible proof that death doesn't win? And this has been their lives for 40 days. But as the author of the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles writes, now Jesus tells them to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes to you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. And then he ascends, rises bodily to heaven. Ten days later on the Feast of Pentecost, the apostles, still in that infamous upper room, are baptized with the Holy Spirit. And their lives are changed again. Their lives are changed again forever. But now, before Pentecost, before being baptized with the Spirit, right now, what are they to do? As they stand there gazing up, watching him disappear, as they crane their necks to the sky, they must be wrestling with awe and despair. Awe that he has been lifted Ah, that he has ascended before them. Ah, that they have seen this. That they are the ones who are present to witness. And despair. Despair that he is gone. Despair that he's left them. Despair that he has said once again, it's not Israel's time, and they are left with vague descriptions and directions for waiting and witnessing. Despair that they have no idea really of what is exactly to come. I mean, what does being baptized by the Holy Spirit even mean? Despair at so very many unknowns, and that he's gone. And they are, on that day oh so long ago, much where I think we find ourselves now, betwixt and between. Is the pandemic over? Is the end in sight? Vaccines matter, but what are the variants? Can we gather together? Is it safe? Is it not? Can we ever get back to normal? Is this a day or maybe the next? Anxiously peering around the corner, hoping that clear directions are coming, wishing that one day, one day goes by, one after another, hoping it to go by quickly so that we can return to what we had and relish again all that we miss. It's a weird time, this moment in COVID tide. 
And I feel like we find ourselves in a similar place to the apostles as they watched Jesus go and waited for the Holy Spirit to come, mourning all we've lost and stuck here with some vague promises waiting for what follows next. Can we learn from the apostles what they did in that time, between times, in that mean time? What'd they do? Well, they stayed in Jerusalem, in community with one another. They didn't go it on their own. They stayed together. They stayed together and prayed. The remaining 11 apostles and some of the women, Jesus' mom for sure, probably Mary Magdalene, and maybe a few others of the women who had gone to the tomb, they all prayed devoutly, regularly. And they began to plan for the future. The group of believers now connected with the original 12 has grown to some 120, now regularly with them all hovering around in and out of that upper room. And from this gathered group, they call forth a new leader to replace Judas who betrayed Jesus, gathering in community, praying devoutly, and planning for the future. Simple though it seems, Might this be a blueprint, a plan for all of us as individuals and as members of communities? Can this be a plan for us and for our congregations in these next few months? And tired as we may be, of the curtailed lives we've been leading, think how annoying Hanging out with everyone in that upper room must have been for the women and the apostles. I mean, for all of them. I mean, no doubt Peter snores. And James and John, they wouldn't be able to wash a dish if it landed in their hands. And and now that it's been confirmed that Mary is the mother of God, I would not be surprised if she got a bit bossy every now and again. But they all stayed together. They stay. And we too, though Zoom and live stream are not how any of us long to go to church, we too may take the time to show up, to connect, to be in relation with one another on those Sunday mornings. It's not what we envisioned we'd be doing two years ago. And frankly, I don't think any of us even a year ago thought we'd still be doing this. But here we are. And even with new people joining us, come to see what it means to be a people of faith in the middle of a pandemic. They were in the upper room, and we're in the Zoom room. They prayed, the women and the apostles prayed with great devotion. And I don't know about you, but sometimes it feels as if my prayers are flat and my devotions dull. And I find myself thinking that Facebook would be way more interesting than saying morning prayer. And it's then, when I slide from my routines and relinquish my spiritual grounding, that the Zoom call seemed to never end and the tedium of my house is stifling and my amputated social life cascade down around me in a shower of shredded dreams and acute frustrations. It's then that everything seems flat and two-dimensional. But when I sit and meditate and say morning prayer, when I walk and pray and I ride my bike and remember or I paddle and pause to take in the world as it is and all that God has given, then I remember Then I remember in my whole body what it means to be loved, 
what it means to be blessed, what it means to be whole. They were devastated, and they waited, and they prayed. What about us? What about you and me? Devastated, sad, filled with grief. Still, what if we prayed? They waited, they prayed, and they planned. They gathered and they discussed their future, who that God is calling, even in that between time, who was God calling to leadership, to come into leadership in their emerging community. And this is when they chose the person to replace Judas, Matthias. Friends, going forward to the new next, that we do not yet know what or when it will be, Who do we need to help lead? Who are our partners, our collaborators, our future dreamers and creators? And how might we plan and who might we now invite into leadership in this odd, unsettled time? It's a porous time in our community, a time to invite new people, new voices, and new perspectives to the forefront. They did it then. Perhaps we can do it now. In this between time, this mean time, this liminal place, we can stagnate, we can complain, and we can despair. Or we can gather, and we can pray, and prepare. And may we all have the heart to do so. In God's holy name, I pray. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, be with you this morning and remain with you always. Amen.